Good morning. morning. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church this wonderful, warm Easter morning. A special welcome to any of you that are joining us for the first time, and to those online, we see you as well, and thank you for being with us. Let us begin worship at the Easter Litany. I invite you to rise as you are able. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grave is empty. Come and see. Christ has won the victory. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I shall not die, but live, and proclaim what the Lord has done. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Our opening hymn is Jesus Christ is risen today. You may be seated. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the life beyond all death, the joy beyond all sorrow, our everlasting home. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whose spirit we have been reborn to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in Christ's victory over sin and death, Let us come before God who calls us to repentance. Mm 
God of life, by the resurrection of your Son, you make everything new. Newness scares us, and we confess to shutting our doors in fear. We have not listened to voices that challenge us. We have resisted the Holy Spirit, moving us in new directions. Our hearts are slow to believe your promises. Forgive us, O God, and renew us to embrace without fear the new life you have given us in Jesus Christ. Amen. People of God, Christ is alive, and death has lost its power. Through the waters of baptism, you have been born anew by the living word of God. Know that your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name, and that the spirit of the risen Christ is alive in you both now and forever. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you deliver us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever.
It is time for the children's message. And what we're going to do today to alleviate a big sort of mob of kids coming up here, we're going to ask that you just raise your hand or stand up so we can see you. But we're not coming up to the front today. We're not coming up to the front for this service because we'd have like 50 of you like right here. Pastor Paul and intern Matthew will be handing out jelly bean treat bags for you all. And so we're going to give a children's... Wow, I see some adults back there raising hands, really. (laughs) Oh, is that Dale Bolt? Yes, it was. So as you raise your hand as high as you can, that would be wonderful, wonderful. And so today... (laughs) Oh, boy. And so today is Easter, and we are so excited And as I was asking the children at the first service, what does Easter bring us? The first first, uh, kid says, uh, the Easter bunny. Can you believe that? Anyway, whoa, whoa, the Easter bunny. Kids, the Easter bunny showed up here. Hey, Easter bunny, why don't you go around and give high fives to all the kids? There's a couple kids. Go give high five, Easter bunny. Okay, apparently that kid was right who said it. Yeah, go around and give high fives, Easter Bunny. Easter Bunny is so excited for today because it is Easter and Jesus has risen from the dead. Hallelujah. And Christ has risen, you bet, Pastor Paul. And so Easter Bunny is going to make his way around to say hello to all the kids. And we have a tradition here at Trinity a very old tradition, I don't know how far it goes back, but each one of you received the jelly bean prayer, and it's sort of a poem. And I don't know how Easter Bunny does it, but yesterday, Easter Bunny, I must be a very fertile bunny, but there was thousands of eggs he laid. (laughs) And I never knew that bunnies laid eggs, but there was thousands of them out here on the lawn yesterday of every different color. And we had at least 500 and some kids here yesterday with thousands of people here at Trinity. It was a wonderful Easter egg hunt, first time ever. And so with every color of the rainbow here, for kids who can read, I want you to read along with me nice and loud. And then for kids, or for the rest of us, we can just listen along here. Okay, we're all going to say this together. Red is for the blood he gave. Green is for the grass he made. Yellow is for the sun so bright. Orange is for the edge of night. Black is for the sins we made. White is for the grace he gave. Purple is for his hour of sorrow. Pink is for our new tomorrow. A bag full of jelly beans, colorful and sweet, is a prayer, is a promise, is a friend's small treat. God bless you kids. I wish uh, I could be with you all up here today, but you're with family, and you're in God's family here at Trinity. It is great to see all of you, and I hope you all have a very happy Easter. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. We continue with the New Testament reading from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears God and does what is right is is acceptable to God. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear 
not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Here ends the New Testament reading, and I invite you to rise as you are able for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came and following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Do you recall one of the Super Bowl commercials that said 2020 was a lemon of a year? The commercial rained down sort of lemons from the heavens, smashing and crashing down on otherwise happy events. The first scene of this commercial was a 2020 New Year's kiss. They were coming together closer, closer to be interrupted by lemons coming down and smashing down on their special moment. The second part of this commercial was a guy grilling out on a perfectly sunny day with spatula in hand, and he looks over at a group of bicyclists, and they're getting pelted by these lemons falling from the sky and they crash into sort of a big heap. And the guy grilling out kind of looks over and kind of laughs at him. And then all of a sudden he looks up and gets smashed by a lemon right on the head. And sort of sickly, we, the viewer, find that funny. <laughs> we laugh. And then the third and last scene of the commercial is at a wedding reception. And the bride is hiding out under this table. The wedding cake is getting pelted down on with lemons. And she lifts up the tablecloth from underneath 
with mascara, black mascara all over her face, yells out, no! Yes, 2020 was a lemon of a year. The three darkest days in human history will go down as lemons as well. From the cruel crucifixion of Friday to the darkness, alienation, and grief of Saturday to the darkness before the dawn on Sunday. For it was on that first Easter morn that one could hear the first Easter morn. For it sounded as if a woman was weeping. And there over the scene was a sour lemon drop moon. It was neither waxing nor waning, rather weeping over the scene. This woman who was weeping, her name was Mary, and she had been sobbing there in the dark. And an angel in white appeared to her and asked her, woman, why are you weeping? And she said, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have put him. Please, sir, if you can tell me where he is at, just let me know. Mary was in a dilemma, a dilemma that left her in the dark, a dilemma that was beyond her control, a dilemma that left her desperately alone, a dilemma that swelled up sour tears in her eyes. Her tank was completely on empty. And so she kind of crumpled to the ground there with nowhere else to turn. And she sensed that someone was over there, a figure supposing him to be the gardener. She got up and turned toward him. And with anguished look in her eyes, she said, Sir, if you know where they have put my Lord, can you please tell me where he is at? And as the figure was still somewhat unclear and ambiguous to her. There was silence and she turned away. And she took two steps like this and it was like a harmony that was hit just right. A melodious voice came to her and said, Mary. And she turned into the light. And at that sweet moment, Mary knew it was Jesus, her Lord. At that sweet moment, the resurrection became a redemptive reality for Mary. At that sweet moment in the east, the zesty lemon sun came casting golden rays over all of creation, and everything came alive. At that sweet moment, the course of human history changed. And the course of human hearts changed from that moment on. For that is why we are here today. We have resurrection hearts on this Easter. From that sweet moment, a church down in the hole, down on South 6th Street, here in Brainerd, Minnesota, gathers with hallelujahs in our hearts because of the resurrection and we say together, Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, when life gives you dilemmas, God makes dilemmonade. <laughs> yes. Out of the three darkest days of human history, death cannot contain our Lord. Christ has risen for us and has risen this day on Easter. Out of the three darkest and most sour days, Jesus was raised, and he raises Mary to believe as the first to go and tell the good news of our Lord. And from the dark and sour year of 2020, we 
are raised with a new hope this day for 2021 that things are going to be good because of Jesus who is resurrected. Easter 2021, this is a day that I've been looking forward to for a long time. I mean, ever since COVID began, I was like, I can't wait till Easter 2021. Just imagining what this day would be like. And I tell you what, the dream has come true. To see you all gathered here in this place, this is amazing. I looked forward to it for two reasons. Sort of the ending of the sour and the beginning of the sweet. A time when the tides would turn. The tides are based on the moon. The moon and the tides can influence the way that the oceans move. The tides can influence how human behavior happens. And I was told that, yes, even a large ship stuck in the Suez Canal can be <laughs> influenced by how the tides can move and lift up and float a boat to be free. The tides are important. Easter tide is based on moon tide. And this is how we determine the complex formula of when Easter is. Easter is always the Sunday after the first full moon of spring. Okay, now I'm going to go in reverse order. The first day of spring is always March 20th, March 21st, depending on how it falls. That's the vernal equinox. And then the Sunday after the full moon, that this next full moon would have been last week on Palm Sunday. And then the Sunday following, here we are on Easter. And so that's how we arrive. That's how we never know when Easter is going to be. And there are three ways that we call this moon. This year, it is a super moon. It's a super full moon. But we have the worm moon, the sap moon, and the paschal moon. These are three ways that we call this moon. The worm moon as the soil of worms in the spring. The night crawlers crawl at night. And then when morning comes, the robins Get a yummy breakfast. Robins, a welcome sign of spring. For the sap moon, it is a time when, as the temperatures rise, the sap begins to flow, and the maple trees start to run with sap, and the buckets are hooked up. I am reminded of when we were out at Pastor Bruce and uh, Norma's place there, and Hans showed us how sap turns into syrup it was a wonderful, wonderful day with our senior high youth. And at the very end, we had a sweet surprise. Ice cream, I'd never had this before, <laughs> with maple syrup on it. I'd never had that, it was so good. I think I poured like half maple syrup, half ice cream, it was just awesome. And the third way we describe this moon is the Paschal moon. And Paschal is the Aramaic word for Passover. And so when Jesus sat there in the upper room with his friends, he began to describe to them the Passover in a new way. That Jesus would be the final atoning sacrifice for all. He would be the, blood, he would be the lamb who was slain or the paschal sacrifice for people. Previously, people knew the Passover story as they had heard it. But Jesus says, no, I am the one who will be slain, so that death will no longer have dominion. Death will be swallowed up in victory. And this is what the resurrection is about. And so the story of Passover became different because the angel of death would then fly over Christ's followers' hearts because Christ's blood would be put on the doorposts of our hearts. And so the angel of death would fly over Christ followers. And this became a new meaning for Easter and what it means for us today. And this baptismal candle, we also call it the Paschal candle, and that's why it is lit today. There is no official baptism, but there is a reminder of baptism for us all because that's what Easter is about for us today. And so Easter, what it means for us today 
is it means that we have the audacity, we have the audacity to call what happened three days ago good. Good Friday. It's crazy that we call that cruel crucifixion good. But we, as Christ followers, know the rest of the story. That Jesus Christ was risen from the dead for us all. What Easter means for us is that the sour stuff of our lives, if we're in a place of doubt, despair, even facing death, we can have that sour moment. Yes, we can, but we know there is sweetness in Jesus who is risen and shining for us all. And what Easter means for us today is that Easter is not about a moon. Easter is about a son. God's son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is risen and shining for us all. Easter brings us the dawn of a new day, a morning when we arise with hallelujahs in our hearts as that sun breaks over the darkness of the dawn and casts golden rays on us. Easter brings the dawning of a new day when we can arise with a new song in our hearts. Easter brings for us a day full of sweetness, because we know that Jesus was risen for us, no matter how sour things can get. And so, like a thirst-quenching glass of lemonade on a hot, human day, here's the lemonade, here it goes. Can everybody say, <sighs> yes, in our, <sighs> we taste, we see that God is good, that God is good for us on this Easter, that no matter what happens, not even death can contain our Lord Jesus who was risen for you, that the three darkest days in human history are no longer the three darkest days, because we know the rest of the story that Jesus Christ was raised for us all. And so, when life gives you dilemmas, God makes the lemonade. Christ is risen. He is risen Hallelujah. Let us rise for the hymn of the day.
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. The Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Each portion of the prayers will conclude with, Lord, in your mercy, and if you would please respond with, hear our prayer. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with power of your love that, are, that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Lord, in your mercy. Pray, praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused. Those who are sick or suffering. Those who are dying and those who grieve. We especially pray this day for Don Wormter, Norma Denniston, Joe Nicholas, Shirley Thesey, Joy Salt, Joe Dudding, Gus Oops, grandson of Nedra Torfin, Laurie Schroeder, Austin Nelson, Betty Furstenberg's grandson, Marie Bont Braun, Janice Sears' daughter, Dolores Lang, Bruce Miller, Diane Ultabruns, Chuck Belzer, Roy Miller, and Tom Phelps. We also pray for those with ongoing special needs, for Howard, Howard Otis, Annette Larson's father, Betty Lucan, Paul Groper, Mary Best, Becky Best's mother, Joan Mullenbach, Nona Grotham, and Nicholas's sister, Alma Miller, Julie Hoppy. We pray for these and others whom we name in our hearts. Assure them of your promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, in our community. Lord, in your mercy. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share that peace with your neighbor in a safe way. Hey, Tate. Hey. How are you? How are you?
For our communion, as we are preparing for that, the ushers will direct you forward by way of the center aisle. And here, um, just to practice in a safe way, we invite you to place your offering into the baptismal font. There is no water in there, okay? <laughs> so place your offering into the baptismal font. And then proceed by, uh, to uh, the tables on either side. Please be mindful of the signs uh, as they identify what... Uh, the signs are so it's wine or grape juice and also gluten-free is available and so um, instructions for opening the wine okay the one side is the bread the other side is the wine that you open and then be careful with the grape juice in that it's two layers and the first layer is very thin and so you peel that back and then you eat the bread and then you peel the rest back and you'll have the grape juice. Um, let us actually stand as we uh, sing Create in Me a Clean Heart uh, for the, and then for the offertory prayer. pray. Be known to us, O Lord, in the breaking of bread, as you are made known to the disciples. Receive these gifts and the offering of our lives, that we may be your risen body in the world. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and broke it and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. And teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us feast uh, this Easter day on Christ, the bread of heaven. Alleluia. You may be seated. And I want to give a blessing for the children as well who uh, uh, do not receive communion. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Christ died for you. He has risen for you. Amen.
I would invite you to stand if you're able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you sent light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and bread from heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Now receive the benediction. May God, who brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated, and we have some announcements. Do you want to go first? I'll go last. Okay. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. That is our traditional uh, Easter greeting. Welcome to you and all members of Trinity Lutheran Church to this resurrection of our Lord Sunday, especially to those who are worshiping with us in person and online on their webpage, on YouTube and Facebook, and our guests this morning. We thank all those people who have sponsored the Easter lilies in special memory of someone or in honor of them or for any special occasion. They have helped to make our Easter special and we appreciate your uh, contributions. Uh, those, those names are listed in your bulletin. Uh, the pastors will be delivering those lilies to our members and friends, and so any lilies that remain after Monday will be delivered to those people. We will continue to offer Drive Up Holy Communion, and we do that on Sunday mornings from 1015 to 11. 45 because there are people who are not comfortable yet being in crowds we are happy to provide this service for them and to bless people and celebrate the real presence of our risen Christ each and every day of our lives intern Matthew pastor hands and I will take turns each week doing weekly devotions on Facebook we will either choose a devotion of our choice or use the Christ in our home as a book for our devotion. So join us for our weekly devotions on Facebook. The new Christ in our home devotionals are here and in, uh, they're available for you. They're a three month uh, long thing. And so uh, I invite you to take uh, one of those and they're at the table in the front entrance for yourself or for somebody else. And after today, we are no longer requiring sign-ups for church services. Yeah. Okay, yes. However, we still ask you to be careful and to wear masks and keep social distancing when we are inside the church. This is for everyone's safety. Your safety is our main concern. That's it for the announcements, and I think you have one as well. When life gives you dilemmas, God makes dilemmonade. On your way out today, you'll each receive a lemon head as a reminder of this. So you'll leave with a good, sweet taste in your mouth. That was it, Pastor Paul. Okay, sounds good.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news.